Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport has traditionally been known as a busy Midwestern hub, not a cultural battleground. That changed last November when six Muslim imams were kicked off a U.S. Airways flight there. Passengers complained that imams were praying loudly and moving about the plane speaking Arabic. The incident sparked a media firestorm, and many local Muslims blamed the airport, not the imams. It also highlighted a cultural divide in the Twin Cities. Much of the debate surrounding Muslims in Minneapolis is centered here at the Minneapolis airport. Not only did the infamous flying imams incident take place here, but there's also been an ongoing controversy involving Somali Muslim cabbies refusing to carry passengers who have alcohol in their possession. The Muslim American Society, Minnesota chapter, issued a fatwa uh, regarding the, the transportation of uh, alcohol by cabbies at the airport, telling them that essentially they would burn in hell, that they would be cooperating in sin, and they were forbidden to do this. The Chicago Tribune has described the Muslim American Society, or MAS, as the American arm of the Muslim Brotherhood, a worldwide Islamist movement. Somali activist Omar Jamal says groups like this have attempted to radicalize the city's growing Somali Muslim population. The majority of Somali people really thought that the idea was crazy to review service to a passenger carrying alcohol. And this was only uh, cooked up by a very small group. The airport has threatened to suspend any cabbies who turn down passengers for religious reasons. But that hasn't stopped the radical movement from expanding its influence. Minneapolis Community and Technical College recently installed ritual foot washing basins in its bathrooms. Muslim students will be able to wash their feet before they pray. Kirsten says the school hasn't always been so eager to accommodate students' religious beliefs. There is a very strong disfavor on the part of the administration when it comes to Christianity. Uh, you know, Christmas decorations, any music that has a remote connection with Christmas during the Christmas holiday season. Whereas uh, the administration there seems to be bending over backwards to offer welcome and accommodation uh, to, to Muslim students. School officials declined CBN News' request for an interview. The school has been consulting with the Muslim Students Association's Accommodations Task Force on how to better serve its Muslim students. The MSA was founded by the Saudi government. Kirsten says the group wants more than just foot baths. They want to see separate housing for Muslim students on campus. They want to see separate uh, uh, food, halal or you know, ritually pure food. They want separate hours for Muslim women in gyms and swimming pools. They want they want imams or religious counselors paid with public funds and they want holiday observances of, of, of Eid and you know, Eid, the, uh, the end of Ramadan and other Muslim holidays on public school campuses here. We used to think like racism and, uh, <laughs> and immigrant, uh, immigrants issue are as, uh, other uh, blacks or Latinos issues. Now we found out really we're not really different. We are the new blacks in this country now. Ahmed Tarwat hosts Belladon, a cable program in the Twin Cities focusing on Arab American issues. We are a country of customer service who <laughs> accommodate the, the big, the divorced, the gay, the tall, you know, we accommodate a lot of people. Including Muslim cashiers at a Minneapolis Target store who refuse to check pork products. Pigs are considered unclean in Islam, so the cashiers were reassigned to another department. Likewise, 70 Somali Muslims recently walked off their jobs at an Omaha meatpacking plant because they weren't given enough time to pray. They were allowed to return to work. Tarwat says these are labor management issues that should be resolved by the companies. But Kirsten fears America could be heading down the same path as Europe and Canada, where a growing number of Muslims are demanding to govern themselves by Islamic Sharia law. She says an official from the Muslim American Society told her the following. All you Americans should be learning Islamic law because it's going to be important. There are two systems here that conflict and they'll have to live in harmony. Tarwat says the choice is simple. We have eight million Muslims. What do you want to do with them? You want to alienate them and, uh, and uh, brush uh, generalization of the Arab uh, suspects and alienate them the way we, uh, we dealt with blacks, the way we dealt with other minority, or we want to accommodate them and not fall in the problem that the European did. Muslim leaders here say that Minneapolis should serve as a model for other U.S. cities in its willingness to accommodate its Muslim minority. 
But critics say there's a fine line between accommodation and subjugation. It's an issue other U.S. cities may soon have to deal with as their Muslim populations grow in numbers and influence. In Minneapolis, Eric Stackelbeck, CBN News.